Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday webinar. It is December the 2nd, 2017, and we are Human Colony, and today we have Jim Charles channeling for us. Uh, just before we get started, I'll just list who's in the room. It's myself, Karen Newman, Temple, Stephanie, Sheer, Salish, Mar Marlene, of course, Jim. We have Alex on the controls, we have Eva, and we have Christine. Why don't you introduce the people in your room, Jim? Yes, I have Angela and Karen, and I can see Lisa, Lisa and John, and Giovanna, and Ray. Perfect. Perfect. We have a nice energy here today. Oh, very nice. And uh, before we get going, just to remind everybody, if they would like to be in the room uh, in the future, they can go to Human Colony or Hucolo.org, and they can become a member. And that gives you the, uh, for $10 a month, you have the right to come into the room, ask the questions that you want, and, uh, you know, uh, interact with Jim directly. You can find that on hukalu.org. And also coming up is our second get-together. It's the Ascension Workshop. It'll be in Sedona, Arizona from February 1st through the 6th. That's five nights of classes with Jim and Max. And also Jonathan C. Martin will be there also channeling. And they'll be doing galactic Reiki. They'll be doing telepathy and working on your own connection. And it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful exchange so please check it out it's five hundred and seventy five dollars for the five nights and there's opportunities to stay there just a little bit before and just a little bit after if you're having a really great time so check it out hucolo.org I know that um, Max has been doing a lot of commercials for the workshop but I know that those of you that are meant to be there will be there so I am not at all worried about it even though we only have like nine people right now I think and then yeah. there's about three other ones that are non-pay. I think that it's going to be a really wonderful time. It's going to be very, uh, there's a lot of information coming and I don't, I don't really know who God has prepared to go to this particular workshop, but I know that it will be great. I know I'm that sure. the, the people that belong there will be there. Yeah. So if I'm you not feel inspired about that and you want to just, you know, check it out and, and, and sign up. So. Yes, if you feel if you feel any way led to go, then uh, start doing your law of attraction for the money and for the way to get there. So, yep. set um, your intention. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Very exactly. good. Exactly. All right. So today we've we've had some requests for uh, Takur, for Shiva Ganesh, for Grendel, for uh, the Fendorians, for um, the Ashtar. The Actorian Council. So we know Elijah's coming, so we'll just see who comes through today. And Angie's and there was a blessing, oh. isn't she? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Jim. Angie has to do the blessing, yes. Yes, before we start, Angie. <clears throat> there she is. Squinch down so we can see you. Yes, there she is. There she is. <laughs> okay. Hi, Angie. Go ahead. Atu ania akati ashasan ukawa a ania katuku asasi akani ate tutu a ani tutu uasisi ni ate tutuku uaomia yanani ate tutu u akasi ni ate ta wani akani tutu tutu a lani anani ka a awawa. As the light first shines in the morning. Let this be a reminder that God is with you and that he is to light your path all through the day and that he will be with you in all things. Remember not to exclude him even in the things that you do not think of God, that God would be interested in, but he is interested in all things because it is his creation and he has created all things and he has caused you to be a part of these things in some way. You do have your free will, which brings you to places that he may not wish you to be, but he will guide you through them nevertheless. You, because he loves you unconditionally and thinks about you always. Ah, that's lovely. Thank you. 
And for those that don't know, uh, Angie was speaking a light language. A lot of people in human colony are speaking light languages, and that's something also that you can learn through human colony. So just to say. Yes, actually, that's interesting that you bring that up, because we, yeah. we've been talking about light languages a lot lately in groups around here, uh, because galactic language, actually, we were doing a webinar once, and Sabrina, I don't know if everyone knows who Sabrina is, but yes. she yes. came and was speaking and said, I have this language that I don't know what it is, and I have several of them that come to me. And as soon as she started speaking like languages on the webinar, people were coming out of the woodwork saying, I have a language too, and I didn't want to say anything because I felt uncomfortable comfortable I didn't think it was I pe I thought people would think I was crazy mm. but there were so many light languages out there uh, that had been already downloaded and, and she just uh, was the spark that opened everybody up and so human colony was one of the first places to to engage in light language conversations so yeah. it's a beautiful thing i just had an inspiration to say that when she was doing it i was when i was in australia a couple of weeks ago um this girl was doing a beautiful we were doing healings for each other and all things and she does all this stuff with flutes and sound and she said i speak this light language do you mind if i use it and i said no and her you know she has really she's really into earth uh, energy shamanic stuff and she, it just this beautiful language came out and I said where did that come from she says I don't know I just started speaking it you know when I was about 15 years old and I have a light language as well and I know many other people do so just yeah and it's it, beautiful that it's you can just interpret them. yeah it's a gift because light languages are there to speak for you when you don't know what to say or you don't know um, all the things to say sometimes your light language to help pray for whatever situation you're in if you don't know how to pray for a situation use your light language and they will give you the words even though you may not understand what they're saying they are bringing you that what you need to be praying for so it is a beautiful thing to have angelic languages light languages and things of that nature because they do help support you and edify you in your prayer life and as you're moving through your life so it's a beautiful and wonderful thing i use them all the time in my meditations and before i do i do prayers and meditation and many times there's a light language attached because there's something to pray for that I don't know about for the other person when we're having a session. But they will know what to pray for about that session. And it really always helps uh, to make that smoother and more beautiful. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you for that. So we're ready whenever you will. And yes, Marlene, we will do a class in Human Colony to learn light language. She asked a question. There is already some classes there. If, if you watch Human Colony, there are some people that do uh, galactic language classes and light language classes. Facebook, there's some on there as well. Oops, have the hiccups. <laughs> okay. I drank a, a, a coffee quickly, and so therefore I have some hiccups. But that's all right. They'll go away. Okay. Bring Elijah first. He told me he wanted to speak today. Not sure about what, but he's um, he's going to speak first to Ed always. He said, I'll be short, but that's not ever true. So, <laughs> <laughs> quantum time has no Get definition. As short as possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up to everyone, and I will do meditation and we'll uh, uh, talk to Elijah first. And then okay. you had many requests. Ashtar, the uh, Octorian command, Mother Mary is a request to Kerr, Grindel, uh, so many. Yeah. After that. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Ganesh and Shiva, there's so yes. many. Okay. All right. All right. I will talk to you in a little bit. All right. See you later. Bye bye.
Greetings, I am Elijah. Greetings, Elijah. Good morning to all, and afternoon and evening, depending. But I have come today to speak about something that is very prominent in the world today, and that is judgment. Hey, mm. oh, I know I don't like to be judged, but realize this that in the society that has been created in the world today is an everyday thing with almost every person. Take it upon yourself, good or bad or indifferent, on everything around you. This affects your unconditional love. Listen to me carefully. Who? Say, this is bad, this is good. You are making a judgment about that particular thing, person, or action. When you do such a thing, a negative label on the whole thing. The whole person, in a way, process of that whatever you have labeled. Listen carefully to me was creating symbolic by the Garden of Eden that if things were perfect is that not that there was no negativity in that area when people had no idea about negativity it did not exist that mean that means that every single thing that God created was good means that no bad connotations were put on dancing, playing cards, doing things that are natural to humanity or natural to a species. Nothing had a negative connotation whatsoever. So when you're looking at people, when you're looking at the world, when you're looking at your president, at uh, Kim Jong Il or whoever his name is, when you look at these people, how do you, them? do you put a filter on and say bad, bad, or do you say creatures I need to pray for? a change in the attitude. I need to pray for a light to be shown in this area because if you will just judge them, nothing will change. Put your perspective on it. Nothing will change. If you put your heart into it and pray for them, energy is going to help them in some way. They will have about the moral fiber of the world or the moral fiber of what they are doing. I know there are people around you they, and you say, how can we not judge things because they are bad, they are negative, terrible. But remember this, when God looks at you, do you want him to say bad? Do you want him to say, mm, not quite right? He is looking at you through the filter of love. He looks at you to find the positivity in you. About the fact that you do negative things, of course he is, because that takes away from your bright light. But that is what he looks at, your light the things that hide your light, that take away from your light. But remember to shine as brightly in this world as pos possible because that is the hope. And it is the light that you bring to it. God is in the planet, but he is showing his light from you. He is shining out through you and through no, those that believe in him 
and that they choose to bring him to the surface and let him be an example to the world. He does not on his own because his people to shine for him. Because if he were to shine, he would obliterate the universe. <laughs> he would shine, outshine the world. And right now, he needs for you to shine to show part of the example of God. Now, I know it is so easy. It is so common. You don't even know when you're doing it. It's just, oh, that's that's good. That's just bad. But you have to observe it as God created it. How did God create and have it not be bad? And then all of a sudden, most things have negative connotations attached to it. Because the negativity has come to influence the world, to influence each of us, to influence how bright the light is to be shown. But remember, look at the original creation. Look, each one of you is an original creation of God. So are you all bad? Can you actually look at someone and say, they are all bad? No. Even the worst people, if you want to say that, have God's light, God's soul. And that is a light, a fire. Find it and pray for it. Pray that it becomes a greater and expanding fire in this world. Because you know, and I'm going to go into something else really quickly here. You create your own realities. You create that which is positive around you. If you are living in a great deal of negativity, you may have grown up in it and that the atmosphere may be full of it and you may have no other consciousness other than what you have grown up into and that is that negativity. But you must find a place outside of this of where you've grown up and where you are experiencing all this negativity find a place where positivity can grow find a place outside of this so that you can experience what you need to experience so that you may get away from that karma from that darkness from that bleakness, from that pain, because from all negativity comes pain, suffering, misunderstandings, hatred, sorrow, in some senses. There are certain sorrows that are natural, such as death. But that is a sorrow that you will get over because you know that they have gone into a greater light. I hope that you will get over it. But remember, find a way to positivity. If you cannot find it where you are, you must look for a place that is accepting for you to find some light. Because you are like a plant, a flower. If you do not have the sun, you cannot grow. If you do not have the water and the nourishment, you cannot grow. If you do not have the air or the carbon dioxide, whatever it is that you need as a flower, you cannot grow. You need many elements to balance your growth. If you do not have the sun, you may grow a little, but you'll be very pale. If you do not have water, you may not grow at all, but maybe sprout a little, but die off. You see, all these elements are necessary for a balanced life. Remember, balance in your life is important. You can't have just, oh, God, and nothing else, because 
there is third dimension all around you that you will must partake of, but God must be in balance with all the things in your life. And he and you will know together how to balance your friendship. Oh yes, I call it a friendship. Balance your friendship with God, your relationship, is important for you to shine out but of course you must be responsible must be wise in your movements must be understanding of what good and evil is so that you may discern what to pray for in what way discern what to pray for in what way How, what do i mean by that i mean is this a person that is good and needs to move forward and just needs prayer for edification or for, to be built up a little bit more? That's one kind of prayer. Or a prayer that they need this negativity to come from them. That's another kind of prayer. Another kind of prayer is for the diseases to be released because they're holding on to negativity from the past lives or from their, their original past in this dimension. There are so many ways to pray for people, and if you cannot pray, try to find your prayer language. It may not come out here as a voice, but it will speak in your heart. You can hear it in your heart if you listen to it. I am here to implore you not to judge the world around you the same way that you have been. But look for God's creation in that which you judge. Look for the creative benefit that he had for it. Was it made for fun and enjoyment? Perhaps. God is not a stick in the mud. He is not someone that does not want you to enjoy yourself or be totally always in prayer. And, and ooh, joy is part of who God is. Joy, happiness, love is not passion and love and beauty, part of God's world, as much as responsibility and other things. Of course it is. Of course it is. Remember that. He is not here to make you miserable. <laughs> so many say, oh God. I'm so miserable. Why did you make me so miserable? And they blame him. And they cast judgment on God. And they say to him that it is his fault that things of, of negativity happen. It is not true. Evil has a way of finding its way into a good people's lives. And then have them blame God for it. Oh, sure. God knows that, it's, that evil is there and that it will come. And it, he will let it come. And you say, well, then it's his fault that it's there. No. He will help you through it. He will help you understand the lessons that are attached to why negativity exists so that you may take joy in a greater abundance when you overcome that negativity. Now, that is a whole other sermon to preach, but I thought I would touch on it slightly. I think there must be a question or two. Is there? Perhaps not. In that case, I will move. Yes, there is. Okay, Lena, you may go. Uh, I have a question. Yes. When, when you are coming to this planet and teach the humankind? I am already here, as you see. Uh, <laughs> but in flesh. In the yes, body. I am here, and there are others like me that will teach. 
because not everyone will know who Elijah is and want to follow or listen to him. But there will be others with names such as Ganesh that will be teaching or those that will be familiar to others that will speak out and say the truth because people will be more apt to listen to them in their own faith, in their own understanding of the God that is true and pure. Well, so I am going to wait for you. If one day you will be coming, I will be helping the ascensions. Is that a plan which you have, or it will not? It is not my not... plan, but the plan of God. As you, as a peoples, move closer and grow in faith and spirituality, you get closer to the essence of God. As mm -hmm. you continue to ascend into god's presence it will continue you will reach next new areas of evolution and thought processes and spirituality and as you ascend you continue to move forward you will meet goals and then move to the next one always going to be ascending growing closer and closer to the energy of god you will probably never reach it and never neither will i because he is expansive and continues to grow, but your whole, whole being wants and desires to know God better. So that is why you continue to grow and become more like him. Thank you for coming, and uh, I love you. I'm only coming short here to see what's going on, and I have to go, so I will say, bless everybody and thank you to for your existence it's really each time i am listening to you i am inspired so i have to go to do my work and uh bless you and see you in heaven bless you <laughs> and see you in heaven and earth much love much love is it time for me to move on perhaps it is but I wanted to leave you with that message about judgment. Remember that it is harsh and it brings harshness into your world. And this is the time to shed as much harshness as possible. And you may have to stand up for yourself and be uh, what you might consider harsh, but when you are standing up for yourself with righteous indignation you're standing for something and protecting something beautiful and precious remember that it is a whole different story much love to you thank you and i am leaving and there is another to come have a wonderful day and many blessings. We are from the Octorian Council that you have requested. My name is Major R.T. Welcome, Major R.T. It is our pleasure to be with you today. Rarely speak to humans this way, for it is clumsy in some senses and sometimes unpure the messages can uh, get tangled but 
we see that today is good energy and that there is need for answers from us in our involvement with you as we move forward. Now, take for example that some of you are going to be part of our council as representatives at first in the astral and eventually in the flesh, if you would call it such, in the future after you become friends with all species or many species. So therefore we give you a hand and tell you that the time has come for you to create a reality for first contact to exist. You cannot have a first contact without first having the people aware of what it is and what it can mean to your planet. It is an absorption of new information from outside of your realm that will bring a greater expansion of knowledge to you in some ways. You see, as you open yourself up to greater understandings of the universe and the galaxy and the peoples that are here and get a greater sense of who we really are and not follow your science fiction characters, but we are like yourselves, good and bad, and indifferent, but many of us are here to build you and help you, if that is what you wish for us to do. But creating your reality of first contact is a necessity that only you can do. We cannot come until you are ready. I can understand many confusions from your world about this particular concept. You feel that we should come no matter how ready the world is? Cannot be. You must overcome your one selfish enclosure so that you may open up to others and to new ideas. Without new ideas and with only self-absorption, you cannot grow and you will die. You must grow. And there are many on your planet that are, but there are many stuck in routines that go in circular motions that are not of growth patterns and are self-absorbed and will implode upon themselves if they continue. Sorrow and unhappiness will not be part of who they are, but they will be part of a great cycle of indifference, pain, and disease. Is there questions? Yes, we have a question in the room from Eva. Eva. Yes. Hi, and thank you for talking to us. Um, I have one general question and one personal. Uh, the general question is, I'm somehow imagining that the higher dimensions have only positive beings. But, but then I hear from you that some are good, some are not. So can you be so kind to explain? 
my personal question is um i seem to be somehow stuck with um, some lack of love um self-creation i would say because it comes to of course me so i wonder if i could receive some help with yes. that, loving myself experience your own words are your prison you yeah. speak that you have a lack of love and this perpetuates the lack of love speak about how much you love everything that you love and this will open your doors of love. You have blocked the love because you have found it painful in some way. There has been sadness in the acceptance of some kinds of love. And you are not wanting all kinds of love, but you are only wanting as a particular kind of love to be with you. You must open yourself to all forms of love and all forms of self-acceptance. And then your prison cell will be unlocked. Remember to speak about yourself in a loving way. Speak about everyone that you know in a loving way. Accept that there is love around you, even though you cannot see it or feel it at times because it does exist. You have just blocked it out with your sorrow and pain because you have had experiences that have not been positive with it at this time. Although you yearn for it inside, your heart breaks because you know exactly how you feel in many ways you must take a deep breath and let go of the vision or what you see as love because it has been tampered with many of those that are around have man manifested their own thoughts within you about what love is and manifested that your love should not grow at this time but they do not see that they have done this. It is your interpretation of their actions and their beings that tells you that they are not loving or they are not part of your love cycle. But all things can be included in your acceptance. I love you. I want you. I accept you in all of your forms now i accept all your positive forms i do not even see right now your negative forms and you should look only for your positive side you are creative you are beautiful you are an unbelievable energy source but you cannot see that with the prison that you have created for yourself. Now, your first question was that you, when you look outside this realm that you're in, you see only the positive. Why cannot you see that in this realm? <laughs> you see, you have given your positivity to a different realm. You say, ah, I thought they were only positive creatures outside of the earth. You have given your positivity over to a place that you are not in. Now remember this. That was just an observation. Let me tell you this. There is good and bad in the universe just as there is in every species. Why is this? Because free will exists from God and negativity there are those that have chosen to be against that which is good they have made a conscious choice and the reason they have is because they feel cheated they are blaming him 
for something in their existence, in their survival. They perhaps think that other species are being treated better by God than they are. And so they turn their backs because they feel that it, this is an unfair action, which is not true. It is that they are not seeing what God is really doing. You must learn that sometimes when you see something, it is maybe not exactly what it appears to be. And I think many of you have learned that lesson. But let me go back to you personally. You are a fantastic individual. You have great talents, even though you do not put that on yourself. You are humble, but you don't even see that as a positive. You see yourself as meek and unaffected. You are not. You may be the most powerful person in the world if you wish to be, but you must learn to see beyond the prison that you have created for yourself. You must learn to see beyond what you understand in some ways. Ask God for you to understand why this person is the way they are. Pray for them to open up to you in an understanding. They may never open up their heart or their love in the same way as you want them to, but God may give you the understanding of who they are without them doing so. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are special, and you have to learn to own up to that specialness and not forbid yourself from it. Forgive yourself for all the things that you feel you are not worthy of, or that you have feel that you have failed in. You are not a failure. You are not a failure at all. Forgive yourself. Let yourself be free of this prison. I only say this in front of everyone because I know how wonderful you are. I can see it. Is there anything else anyone wants to ask? There is a question from, oh, Sheer has a question. Go ahead, Sheer. Sheer, I am aware of you. Uh, yes, I think Marlene was the first, so I will go after her. Go ahead, Sheer, it's my pleasure. Okay, okay first go Sheer and then Marlene. <laughs> <laughs> well, greetings, how are you? I am well. Well, there's two things I was wondering, um, but I know that at this time no one gives predictions because things need to settle down. So I'm going to ask an opposite uh, question, and I want your opinion about the last year. Uh, next month, month we are moving to 18, and I was just wondering. Uh, how was that year according to your expectations? And if we have moved in the right direction, maybe we're, I don't know. What, how do you see this year for us? When it comes that... to looking at other species, we have no expectations except for your expectations as a species. We see that you that some of your people have made great efforts to move forward. Then we also see that there is great negativity working in equal amounts of uh, terrifying problems. But we have no expectations except what we know that your people are uh, able to accomplish. At this point, we are looking for you to come alive and 
be more aware of who you are as individuals and as a species. This is the first thing that must be done for your continued survival. You must, and you are awake as an individual and are moving forward, but there are many on your planet, as I have mentioned before, moving in circular motions, and those circles get closer and closer and tighter, and it's harder to break the bonds of these cycles without a great event or an awakening for them. This may happen in degrees on your planet, but we are not expectant or do not expect or have any expectancies with the species other than what God would want for you. And you must take that information and use it as you see fit. If you choose to annihilate yourselves, then that is what it will be. But we are hopeful that that is not the case. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your input. You are welcome. The council speaks to you through me, but I'd say for the council that they wish you only the best of greetings and the best of will. It, it may sound like we are indifferent, but it is not the case. We just have not a chance to have expectations, for it is not proper to shed our expectations upon you or to give you what is our opinion fully, for we are not in a place of judgment. Well, it was more like of a predictions, like you predict that in 2017, the mass of magic um, power will be at a certain percent. You see we a can prediction give of percentages when it comes to when it comes to facts and figures. Yes, we may be able to give you facts figures, algorithms, these are called facts and statistics. They are not part of our prediction for you, but they are actual truths. Yeah, I was... Um, never mind, maybe it was too much of a general question. Uh, thank you. I understand thank you. where you are coming from, and I cannot answer it as you want me to, because I see inside of you that there is something personal attached to this. Now, because of that, I cannot answer it the way that you want me to. But I can say this. Your evolution as a person has come along nicely, and I will not attach facts and figures to that. Okay. Thank you very, very much. You are welcome. Peace to you. All right, the council may reunite soon. So I will be on my way as that was stated. Be of good kindness one to another as alliances will be we are kind one to another we are losing our connection 
So I will be off. We did have one question if we can keep you from going, but I will up. try to enforce the connection. All right. Um, Continue. The question is from Marlene. Marlene has a question. Continue. Greetings. I'm happy to speak with you today. Um, two brief questions, please. Uh, you Arcturians are very well known to be key species in genetic research. Uh, you are very yes. advanced. Uh, what has been brought to Earth at this point, from your knowledge? From what has been brought to Earth as far as genetics? Yes, and to our scientists that we are using at this point now to help us in our ascension process. Okay. Yes, there are things that are being brought to Earth from other sources. We cannot become directly involved with your people or scientists or governments, but we can give information. And some information was spoken to enable scientists to be more aware of the genetics within hybrid species such as yourself. They have now been able to locate some of the hybridization that you may find alien within human beings of all different nations. What this means is that they are understanding that the galaxy as a whole is more friendly and more a part of them than they once believed. And so therefore, their advancement in genealogists and genetics, there it is, their advancement in genetics is now starting to include alien scientific um, understandings because the DNA of humans is so diverse. This will help with their understanding and expansion of knowledge. It may not help directly with ascension except for the expansion of knowledge beyond Earth as a singularity, but it will bring other species into light as being part of who they are. Thank you. Can I ask another question, please? I, yes. Thank you. Um, your knowledge and expertise in building spaceships is used, uh, I understand, by other other species it in building true. their own. Can you speak about enhancing our Merkaba when we space travel, please? That is an individual power enhancement. We send energy to your Earth via prayer and healing. You yourselves create your own realities in the sense of how powerful you are as an individual. Your individual Merkabas or symbols of uh, power can be enhanced by your own spiritual beliefs and understandings. Believe that they are great and they are powerful and they become greater and more powerful. Use your stones or crystals to enhance them and they will be enhanced. Use your belief systems to bring other people into your understanding of how the Merkaba is used so you increase your knowledge of it and it becomes more powerful. Remember to let only the positive thought processes about these faith symbols and power symbols 
to be part of your belief system so that they may enhance and not detract from the energy that they give. You see, your faith and your belief is very important when it comes to um, energizing the symbols that you have faith in. Thank you very much. You are welcome. If also that you believe that we are helping you to energize your Merkaba, it is also true. Yes, thank you so much. You are I, welcome. Um, there's a couple questions in the chat. Uh, one of them is concerning the woman sitting behind you. Everyone's a little concerned that she's overwhelmed by energy. <laughs> and who is that? Are you all right? Yes. Okay. Are you overwhelmed by energy? <laughs> I don't know. Are you feeling something strange? No. All right. If okay. you need help, please let us know. Perfect. Um, there was a question from Pete. He was at wondering if he can receive a download or implant to assist him with his channeling abilities. <laughs> There is such a thing available. Let me explain how it works. Where is Peter? Let me find him. Peter, do you already channel? I believe that he does. He's in the YouTube chat. <coughs> and there's a little bit of a delay. So I think the question, the answer will come a little bit later than right this This is second. what I would say to you, because I understand how these particular implants work. We ourselves are not the giver of these implants, but we know how they work and they are successful. When someone has learned how to channel or is beginning to channel, the energies put out by their channelings is measured and the deficiencies of their channeling abilities are also measured. Therefore, the implant is to help with deficiency of the channeling. After they have studied the channeler's energies, deficiencies, and positivities, they will then give the implant made especially for that person to that person so that they may overcome their deficiencies in a way that will be most positive for their success. This is how it does work. We ourselves, as a community of telepathic peoples, do not give implants to humans, but there are those that will. You must ask the appropriate delegation. Is that an appropriate and sufficient answer? All right, I will move on. And okay. Is there more questions to be asked? Yes, there's two more questions. One question is from Krelek, and Krelek says, exactly how does the non-interference rule work? In the past, there was a time when uh, extraterrestrials directly taught humans things in the ancient times and then there was the Ca California Missile Crisis. Well, there are different perspectives and understandings of the rules that engage your planet. Rules have been made to forbid interaction with your planet from Galactic Council. The reason for this was it was seen to be inappropriate. What I mean by this is, yes, at that one time, there were many species that were allowed and, yes, able to influence your planet. 
and how it proceeded because you were not aware of your own sentience in some ways as as much as you are today you are we're not aware of how far behind you were on the evolutionary curve as it were and so they wanted to move your civilization into a greater place and they added their own hybridization and their own dna to you each species that visited now come the 19 60s and 70s, as you call them on your planet, became a time of great questioning for the galaxy. There was many things happening, many people being abducted, many negative aliens arriving, many things happening that were not for the benefit of your species. Therefore, galactic government made rules and punishments for those that could, should not be a part of your essence or beings. They gave rules not to interfere with your society as a whole anymore. They needed you to proceed as you needed to proceed so that you could learn for yourself how to take care of yourself and as individuals. Therefore, the prime directive, as it's been called by some species, was initiated in the late 60s and early 70s and many have been punished for breaking it. Thank you very much for that. Um, there is one more question and it says, would you, this is from uh, Ecclesiast 888 and it says, greetings, would you, um, if they wanted me to ask if Ahura Mazda is connected to Amun Ra, the Egyptian ancient god. Thank you. Kindly. Could you please pronounce that again? Perhaps it is a different name in our culture. Okay. The, they want to know if Ahura Mazda is connected yes. to Amun Ra or Amun Ra, the Egyptian there ancient is some god. Connection, yes. What it is on your planet, we are not aware of. What it is in galactic understanding is different. They have been together in other worlds and done work together in other places. That would not be particularly interesting to you since it would be not part of your historical culture or make any sense even to your existence. Okay, thank you very much for that. I don't think that there's any more questions at this moment. Is there someone else that you wish to speak to? We had we had requests earlier for, of course, Takur, for Grindel, for Ganesh Shiva, the Ashtars. I hear many of them that are here. I will bring it to you who is waiting. Thank you. And the lesser known L collectives, apparently, from Sheer. Mother Mary. And Mother Mary. I know who that is. Let me see who is waiting. Much love to you. Peace from the Octorian Council and from Octorus Space. And peace be to you. Thank you.
Hi, Grendel. <laughs> it's time for a Grendel break. Right, it's like a more. dance break even, isn't it? Oh, I don't <laughs> dance, honey. Mm -hmm. oh. Two-legged, but I am not stable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Uh, well, we're just we're just getting to that point. Yeah, yeah. Short little stubby legs. Yeah. Um uh hold on. Okay. All right. I'm just here to answer some intergalactic questions or questions you may have because I heard that they were calling me. And as you know, I'm full of information. So use me. <laughs> okay. Well, the first person that would like to use you would be Eva. And then it's going to be Sheer following after you. Oh, yeah. Oh, some of my favorites. Hello. <laughs> All right. Hello. Eva, Eva how are you? Yes. Oh, I am always happy when I see you. I talk to you. Thank you oh, so much. Oh, yeah, honey. I'm love always you. happy to see you, too so love you well i have a question to you about um reptilians because quite often i catch some negative um thoughts and then yeah. i kind of stop and i think who is thinking that and then i see these reptilians like laughing like laughing like are they teaching me or teasing me or what is going on they're yes when people are stuck in negative thought processes they do tease you they do come and uh they use you as a little bit of a guinea pig to check and see how much negativity you will take before you'll say hey get out of here so yeah. um there's a lot of jokesters in the reptilians they, they they're party people in some ways so but um they're not nice party people. They are, they're users. So don't let them use you. Just kick them out. Okay. So I'll don't, don't worry about that. They're not there to really harm you in any way. But so they're just having a good time like in the astral. Yeah. yeah. Can you also tell me why do I, why do I like a reptilians? Because we're, we, we are fun. There is no question. And we are... And we uh, we like uh, we like to um, express ourselves in the most mm, uh, 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 basic ways. We don't sugarcoat anything, and that's why you like us. I like that. You because like you're not somebody that likes all oh, this flowery language and all that stuff. No, you like just basic information. And you know that we're very down to earth. Yes. Well, at least a lot of us. There is a few of us that aren't, but I mean, there's a species called friendly reptilians. They're a little bit more flowery, yeah, but yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I love you. Talk to me whenever you want. <laughs> of course I will. You yeah. know I do. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Okay. Thank All right. you. I thank love you. you. Take care of her. Me <laughs> too. Love you. Love you, baby. Yeah. Sheer, go ahead. Yeah, Sheer, how you doing? Hey, Grindel, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I was wondering if there's something that we need to discuss, any developments? There's lots of developments. I don't know if we can discuss it on here, but... No, There's a lot no. of development. As you know, I work in the the Israeli government. I walk into a particular person there. They're very aware that there's one person that I'm working with, but they don't know who it is. <laughs> That's good because um, there's so many people to walk in there in the government, and it's just they just will never figure it out. And besides, they don't have really time to. So, but yes there's many developments and israel is very important in the, the the whole scheme of the world right now uh it, there's a lot of eyes on israel 
there's a lot of ears on Israel. Yeah, the different and ridiculous laws that are now being legalized here, which makes things more interesting. And yeah, also, yeah, they're, they're trying to be protect themselves in a sort of stupid way, but that that's only my opinion, and I, I they would call that a judgment, but you know me, <laughs> I'm not one that uh, is a is totally void of judgment <laughs> no but um i try to be good no when it's come to them it's <laughs> perfectly understandable i was wondering yeah, if well, yeah. any developments yeah. that i should know about in in person obviously uh yeah there is a couple i like what you're doing in class are are you yeah you're you're learning quite a lot um Keep those grades up. Yeah, sure. I know they're not the highest right now, but they will. They'll get better. Yeah, if you want to pop in one of my classes, let's say during math in your original form and scare the living hell out of my math teacher, that will be acceptable to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that he would appreciate it. He's not wearing his depends these days, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's a, actually it's a she, the the one who teaches me physics. It's oh quite yeah, a yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. Mm. Well, I should say she's not wearing her depends. Mm. Yeah. He will definitely ta get a heart attack, but she will probably hit you in the face. Yeah, I I can scare her, but I'm not gonna. Okay, <laughs> I don't know where that conversation is going. Um, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Grendel, there's We're a couple just questions. A little wow, you know. <laughs> yeah, your old friend Krolik has a couple questions. He wants to know. Oh, Krolik. Yeah, hello. He wants to know: Do you have a snout? Which I don't think you do. He also wants to know: it, Do you it, like snuggling? <laughs> oh God, snout! I have a little one, not a big one. No. You're thinking like crocodile? No, no, I'm not like that. Um, <laughs> it's just small. It comes out. It's bigger than your nose. It goes out farther than that. But it's not real long, no. And snuggling is, um, well, uh, uh, <laughs> there are reptilians snuggle in a different way than humans do. So... Um, <laughs> I do enjoy it, but it certainly doesn't look the same. Okay. And then there's another question that says, "If have you ever seen Earth science fiction space battles, and is there any realism to it, or is it exaggerated compared to the real thing? Just curious. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, well, you remember, I was on the Earth in the 60s in a walk-in body, uh, and I and I did watch science fiction thought it was pretty laughable actually and um the modern day stuff is closer to reality than that the older stuff but still there's it's not quite like that i i can't even tell you what a space battle is like these days because they're they're so few and far between at this point even the war that's going on on the other side of the galaxy on the other side of the milky way is there's not much space battling it's more um ships going to the each other's planets and battling that way but um they're not really that exaggerated i guess uh yeah. it's really i really don't really pay much attention to it to be honest with you i have so much to do here I haven't been really paying attention to the. Seems to be getting a little better, by the way. Hopefully, it'll be over soon. All right, thank you for that. And then there's a question from Lil. Oh, from Lilypad. She wants to know what kind of reptilian does she have in her makeup? Oh, let me see, Lilypad. Are you sure you have reptilian in you? We'll check. She's gonna, yeah. Um, she does have a little reptilian 
it, it, what influences that is that there's a reptilian around her. She has oh, okay. a, a reptilian visitor, and that really brings out the reptilian side occasionally. But she has a little bit of Elias Sean Dizendi in her, and that's not a really hateful, that's not a, the super aggressive reptilian, but it can be. And there's a different kind of reptilian around her that is that brings out the negative side to that every now and then. But actually, not too bad. Nah, I've seen a lot worse. Yeah. Okay. Um, Richard Hausman has a question that says, uh, uh, Lily just responded. She says, lately she gets angry quite easily. So that's why yeah, she was that's asking. From the other reptilian around you, Messing uh, with your reptilian DNA, but gotcha. we can work on that. It's not as bad as you think. Um, anger is sometimes good when it's used in a positive way, like to stand up for what is right. But if you're just getting pissed off because somebody's doing something that you don't like, well, then you better reevaluate. Okay. All right, uh, Richard Hausman has a question. He wants to know um, if how is his reptilian daughter doing? His hybrid, his hybrid reptilian daughter. Let me clarify. Um, is that Kendra? No, it's Richard Hausman. No, his daughter's name. Is it Kendra? Um, there's a little delay in the chat, so let me just see. I think that's his daughter. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm just waiting She's for doing good, though. Oh, he said yes, it's Kendra. He said yes. Yeah, um, Kendra's doing really well. Um, I like her a lot. She's feisty, but yet well behaved, if you know what I mean. She's she will speak her mind when asked, though. I do like that. But that way she's very much like you, Richard. You're actually uh, the kind of person that doesn't fool around or you're very down to earth and basic and you're all your uh, you're All your astral children seem to have a at least a little of that quality in them. So yeah Okay, perfect and uh, Christine has a question and then Ava All right Hello Grindel Yes um, Hi. I <laughs> I was wondering, um, there's one particular person in um, uh, this ranch that I have to deal with, and she yeah. just goes off into these crazy high drama, yelling, screaming, verbally abusive. Does she have reptilian in her? One minute. Um, let me connect with her real quickly. Uh, I okay. think I have connected with her before through you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, she has a little insectoid in her too. Just a touch. But insectoid Ooh. is can be real. They whenever they get mad, you better watch out. Because they have an exoskeleton. They'll smash you into the wall yep. uh, and not feel a thing. But you will. <laughs> And that, that's how they deal with some of their en enemies because their exoskeleton is very strong and it actually can withstand some kinds of bullets and some kinds of it's that strong. So if you uh, if if you uh, make them bad, there's a problem. Oh yes. And why is this person yelling and screaming anyway? They really don't have that much of a reason to do so. According to what I see, it's just a personality yeah. problem. How can we, um, by sending her Reiki, um, would that help? Any kind of healing modality or positive energy will definitely help the situation, but it might take a while before you see any results. Right away, you might not see the results, but there will be results coming in the future okay because i keep clearing the office and she just yeah i see that you're using the tinch che aren't you yeah 
as a matter of fact. Yeah, I I've just seen learned. that. <laughs> yeah, you, you're using the tinch shade uh, for clearing. That's good. I'm glad because um, are you using it for grounding? Because she needs either. to be grounded. Yes. That yes. could use it to ground her a little bit. Okay. okay. I'll do that more. It, because you're using it to clear the room, but you're not using it to ground her, and she needs some yes. grounding. And the tinch che can also do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I've been doing some grounding um, from distance. You can do that, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ava, go ahead. I have a question on what's going on in Yemen because we see all kinds of really horrifying images um, and hearing that United States and Saudi Arabia are just like really playing that trick there. But really, what, you know, I never know what are the news true or not. So if you can tell yeah, anything about There that. is some truth to that. There is some really horrible things going on and they're doing some, a lot of uh, hand combat there. They're, it's not bombs and all that, but it's more uh, shooting and hand hand -to hand combat. And yes, the people there are in very much danger. Yes. I cannot really tell you the reasoning behind it, because Israel is not part of that scenario, but I see that the United States is in there in some ways, and they sh actually, um, I, I can't comment on that anymore because there is some top secret information that is that goes with that, and I cannot, I see what it is now, and I can't comment on it. Yeah, but they have something that is important to the United States that the United States is looking for. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, there's yeah. one question. There's a question from Slava. Um, he says, "Hello, Dindo. Ah, Slava. Mm, Just a yeah. quick question about his connections with the Ella Shada Zendi. Anything that you can share? Thank you very much." Um, well, of course, he has a lot of astral children. The Elia Shonda Izendi. Oh, thank you for the pronunciation. Interested. What's this? Oh, thank you, you for the correction of the pronunciation. I said. Oh, that's right. Oh, that, no problem. Elia Shonda Izendi is also um, interested in hybridization, and they have come to Slava and wanted to have a hybrid child with his DNA as well, because he was he's an important person in their thought process since he has a lot of hybrid children and so is richard richard has a a um a uh, a uh, reptilian child also but they were they're looking at uh you for to have another hybrid child they are real pleased with the outcome because you have a lot of um technical knowledge about certain things that they're interested in and hopefully that will translate to the child as well yeah okay thank you and christine has a question correct yes christine yep. has a question go ahead christine i i think i already went oh did you okay i i sorry i thought that was there was another question <laughs> okay uh, all right, I think that's our last question for you, Grendel. All right, then. All right, then I have a, just I wanted to say to you that important time for your people and all peoples of the earth. There's a lot of talk about war. There's a lot of talk about destruction and overtaking this and overtaking that. Please be aware that your prayers can help this. Please be aware that it doesn't have to happen, but you're allowing it so far because you're not sending enough energy to this area to stop it. And you're saying, what area should I send it to? You, uh, Kim Jong-un, 
you should send it to Trump, you should send it to Putin, you should send it to Israel, you should send it to the Middle East, uh, the entire planet. Yeah, that's true. But there are certain places that need it worse than the others. But Mother Earth definitely needs your, your help also with the tectonic plates and the volcanic eruptions and the tilt of the axis and all these different things that there are so many things going on on your planet it, it and the weather prayer must go out constantly for the planet and for different places on it so keep that in mind as you're living your day-to-day -day life just uh there's a thought process that you can pray all the time that you can send out prayers no matter what you're doing um there's some things you might not want to be praying during but there's other things that while you're working you can be praying while you're making dinner you can be praying while you're sitting oh don't watch tv but uh, uh while you're sitting listening to music you can be praying um, and sending off this ener positive energy to the earth. It's really necessary at this time. Things and as many channelers have been predicting, and I'll just mention this because I've been hearing it, that December <coughs> is going to be a month of change. Have all of you been hearing that? Well, it is very, very possible. At this point, it is very, very possible that uh, December could change a lot of things. But I'm praying, I am praying, and I hope that you are too, that these really holog holocaustal kind of things don't happen. Because I don't think they're absolutely necessary. But the, but with prayer, they won't be as bad. So please, please bring your prayer caps to this, this time and place. Is there any more questions before I go? If not, then I'm going to be out of here. All right. Well, Christine just says, thank you for the reminder for constant prayer. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. It needs to happen. It really does. It really needs to happen. I'm out of here, and there might be one more real fast. Somebody want to talk. I'm not sure. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. All right. Hello. Much love. A question. Thank you. I have a yeah, question. Yeah. Blessings. Can I ask a question? Keep it cool, baby. Ow. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um. About sending out prayers, in regards to sending out. Um. As a healer, in what way can I use the healing abilities to help in that way besides the prayers? Whatever way you can, whatever way you can think of is, is possible. If you think to send it to the earth, that's possible. To the sky, that's possible. To um, anything, uh, anything that needs prayer, you can send it anywhere. Prayer goes everywhere. So you don't have to really worry about what, because everything right now could use some prayer. So but just I'm whatever comes to your mind, send out some energy to it or healing. Yeah, there that's are what many I'm places on the earth that need healing. Um, Mother Earth, just give it to Mother Earth as a whole or give it to society as a whole. Give it to people that need healing. You can do it whatever way possible. <coughs> that is the truth. Okay. Thank you, Grand. All right. I'm what? Well, I was about ready to go, and then whew, there was another question. We pulled you back, but anyway, but now we're saying thank I mean, you very yeah, much. You did actually pull me back. Yeah, I was about, I was about gone. Okay, well, we think you're, we're, we're done now, so. All right, very good. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Okay.
Don't pull me back. That's 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 rough. Oh. We won't do it again. <laughs> All right. Damn. All right. No. I am the one they call Mother Mary. Hello, Mother Mary. Blessed be. Blessed be. <clears throat> and you've called me for a reason, and I, I understand that. This is a grave time on the planet. Not that, not that it cannot be overcome. But there are many things happening, and I can help to intercede for you, if that's what you wish. It's not necessary that I intercede, but some people feel more comfortable talking to me than directly to God or Jesus. I can understand that. They need a mother figure to talk to for a moment. That's totally understandable. Is there any questions for me? Yes, Temple has a question. Go ahead, Temple. Um, hello, I'm I'm so happy to talk to you. Um, I I have a question. I'm wondering what my connection is to you. I have a connection to all people of the earth, but stronger connections to some than others. But I am one that protects your body. There is something in your body that needs help. And I am there for that. I also help you connect to prayer and to positive thinking and to the greater good of the earth. You have many things that you do and many things that you think about in light workers thought processes i am there for you in that okay i was i guess my my specific question was i was told that um when i when i had an incarnation here on earth that um your sister was my mother wait your sister yes is that correct that is correct okay all right thank you so much you're so welcome dear and you are such a lovely child thank you blessings blessings there's a question in the room yes, yes. some of us are wondering is jim's body thirsty <laughs> oh i have not checked that but yes, there is a good possibility. Uh, here. There. This is hard. Water. How do you do it? Right. Oh, yes, I see. <laughs> that should be sufficient. All right. Thank you for being on top of that in the room there. There is a question in the room. There is another question in the room. Okay. Come forward so they can hear it. <clears throat> okay, so I want to open my own business. Is there anything I need to be aware of? Any um, blocks or um, anything? I see. Let me tell you this. If there is, you may remove them immediately. Just call on me and I will come and look and see if there's anything that you need to remove, any karma that is negative, and I will bring Father God into the picture and have him remove the negativity from the area, from the thought process, and from the people that you are dealing with. Am I working with you now? You are, at this moment, 
and from now on. Thank you. Um, there's a question from the from Liney in the chat, and she wants to know how can she connect to you. Oh, that is easy, dear. Just call my name. Just call Mary or Mother Mary. I will be there. There's no one I don't speak to. There's no one I will ignore. So please call me and I will be there. Perfect. And then Kina, uh, Kina Alem has a question. She says, um, can you explain, and I don't know if this is true, what happens, but she says, explaining, can you explain how we damage ourselves when we tap into too much light frequency? Damage yourself? Now, yeah. I don't know where you got the idea that too much light is damaging, but it is not. Um, if, if you, you can only take in so much light, and you cannot take in too much light because your body can't hold it. So, in order to take in too much light, you would have to be bigger than you are. So, there's no such thing as taking in too much light. Your body only can handle so much. And so, there's a limit to how much light your body can take in. Light will not damage you. And so do not worry about that. If you cannot take in more light than what you have, then you are at your fullness of light for the moment. Now, there is always times of expansion, and there are always times when you grow and are able to bring in more light at some time. But perhaps now is not that time. And too much light will not damage you. If you are experiencing something negative, then that is not from the light. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Eva. Eva. Yes. Hi, Mother Mary. Thank you for talking to us. Um, I have a personal request. I grew up in a Catholic family and um, I received a lot of negative ideology through Catholic, which created within me kind of resistance to anything which is Jesus, Christ, and I'd like to remove that because it's not necessary. Yes. You, could you have, have been a, um, a victim of religion and not of spirituality. Yeah. Now, religion is something that will mold you and try to make you into what it believes you should be. But God the Father and Jesus want you to be who you truly are. They want you to burst forth with the love and true thought process that was created within you. So when you look at things, you do not see negativity where religion has put negativity. You see, you must see through all those negative things and see the positive that is there. Now, God, perhaps you do not even need to speak to Jesus at the moment. Not that he is bad, because he is not. He is a wonderful and beautiful savior, but he is also, was a man on earth. But God can speak to you directly. Look for your spirituality, your truth, your light, your love, and connect with that because God has put himself into your soul. He is your direct connection. He is your direct light. He is your direct beauty. He is your direct growth, growth source. Now there are me and Jesus and angels that are indirect growth sources. We can help you grow also. But God is where it all comes from. God is the source of all beauty, love, and understanding. So have your soul connect directly to him and he will brighten you up. There are so many things and people will say, how, how can I connect? 
How can I connect? He created your soul. How can you not connect? Just go into your heart, into your soul, and find that beauty and light that he created within you. And that is your connection. He loves you so much. You do not even understand the beauty, love, and understanding and wisdom that is there right inside of you. You really, really don't. Let it out. Let it free. Go there and look at it because it is the brightest light in the universe, and that is you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Radu Lazar has a question from the chat. He says, I've changed from the Christian belief to the Buddhist belief. How does this affect my relationship with my wife, who is still Christian? Now, that is up to her how it affects your relationship. She has free will. She has understanding of what Buddhas and Christians and Islam and Muslims and everything is. She will have an opinion of it, but pray that only love will come through. Because if she sees only love and only God, if she sees only God, it will not matter what religion that you are. What it is the same energies as Christianity, only brought to you in a different perception. The perception that is different because God knows that everyone sees him in a different way and accepts him in a different way. So as they work together, as you work together, you will find that both of your perceptions are valid and that you may see God this way and his love is is the same for both of you, but you may see him slightly differently. Join those perceptions together so that you may understand him in a slightly bigger way. It doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that you have to limit yourself to Buddhism or Christianity, but you may expand yourself into the love of God that is ever inclusive of all religions. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Um, there's a question from Pete. He wants to know, is there anything that he really needs to know or pay attention to? Pay attention to how you speak to others. Remember, sometimes people can misunderstand when you speak because they their perception of the language may be slight different. Remember to bring love to all your conversations because as you speak in love, the layers of information that go through love reach in a different way than mere words. There are some words that have positive meanings, but if you give them the wrong inflection with your voice, they have different meanings. So be careful with your language, with your speech, and with the way that you present yourself. You are a loving person, but sometimes you can be misunderstood, and the people that you speak to are different than what you are meaning to say. Hold love in great honor and in a great position when you communicate, for it is part of the world and part of the example that you must be to the world. Thank you. I think that applies for everyone. Thank you so much. Um, Lilypad has this question. I think this is the last question. She says, um, what is the meaning of the violet flame and how can we use it to meditate? Um, how can she use it or meditate with it? Each individual has an idea of what the violet flame is, but truly, 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 
God is within the violet flame, and that is the most important thing. The violet flame that represents the crown of the of the chakras and royalty of God and his place in the universe. And in my opinion, when using the violet flame, you can use it to encompass your your wants and needs and encompass your infirmities so that it may be a healing modality that it may be an in influence on positivity through healing through prayer and through existence of spirit Thank you. Um, I'm just waiting for Slava. He's typing a question for you, and this will be our last question. He said, um, he, he said, excuse him from bringing up the subject, but can you, uh, he, he said his mother recently watched some videos on YouTube uh, which th use the name of Ra, and she wanted to know, he wanted to know if there's any negative connections from this um, that have connected to his mother. Is there any attachments, I believe, was the question. It depends on if she brought any negative connections to it. Remember, if you bring negativity to a subject and put your negativity on it, it will have a negative influence. So if she did do this, then yes. But if she did not, then no. If you are looking at Ra as a positive, he was an alien, but he was attached to deities. The deities around him were very positive. And Ra was a, an alien that had great and wonderful powers and great connections to the universe. And so he could be looked at as positive. But if somebody looked at him as a god and then re realized that he wasn't, they may put negativity on him. But do not do that. It was your people that put him in that position and not the other way around. And then there's, again, sorry, one last question, and this really is the last one. Uh, Trinity Morgan asks um, about a man named John Allen Miller who calls himself the original Jesus and teaches amazing things. And he was, she was wondering if you can <clears throat> confirm this. The original Jesus, there is Jesus within him, but he is not the original. And that's all I will say. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we are right at, at the end of the hour, so if, if you are ready to go, we are ready to also uh, conclude today. Yes. I will leave, and you may have blessings told unless you want me to do a blessing. I think it would be lovely if you did a blessing. Very well. My children, I look at you and I see only love and light. Lift yourselves up and let God lift you up as well. But remember, you are the creators of your own destinies. You have many missions to accomplish. You have foresight and hindsight to use as tools for moving in this dimension. I was here to give birth to Christ for a great mission that he had and now my mission beyond the grave is to give hope to those that need it, to give love to those that have none, to give healing and understanding and intercession when necessary. Please use your light and the greatest abilities. Shh, grow and become more creative as you open up the spiritual gifts that you have. Let love be 
a part of all things that you do. May love be unconditional and may it not judge or be limited. Feel your heart expand when you think of God and the way that he works and the creation that is you. Be of good cheer and smile often and show the world the joy that God has given you. Be of good cheer one to another and learn that the gifts that you give will come back a hundredfold. Much love to you. Amen. Thank you so very much, Mother Mary. It's been wonderful to talk to you and, and all the beings that have come today. So much love to you from us, from in your God room, I'm sure, and here. God bless you. Bless you. Namaste. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, how is everyone today? <laughs> right. We're fine. This was it amazing. Was, it was a beautiful channeling. Thank you. Really? It was, okay. Wow. A lot of people came through and Grendel. <laughs> yes. No, of course. <laughs> you say his name and he shows up, really. We love him. I don't know how many times that has happened that they just say his name and he's there. We like so, him, so. Yeah. Um, just sometimes we have to keep him out because it's not his time. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's willing. But they let him in today. Awesome. <laughs> well, just before we go, just to let everybody know, <clears throat> this has been the Hukalo Saturday webinar. And if you would like to become a member of Hukalo, go to hukalo.org and you can become a member and then you can come and sit in the room and ask your questions directly. We tried to get as many as we could from the YouTube chat, but if you want, we'd love to hear your voice. So for $10 a month, you can have access to all the stuff that Hukalo is doing. Also coming up in February will be the second Ascension Workshop and that'll be hosted by Jim and Max in Sedona, Arizona. It's five days, February 1st through the 6th. The cost is $575. Uh, you need to go ahead and sign up because the, the places are going very quickly. So there'll be galactic Reiki and telepathy and channeling teachings. teachings. Jonathan C. Martin, who's another channeler, will be there also channeling and helping. So it's not to be missed. And then also just for anybody that's in the California area that can get to Burbank on the Chris, how do you say it? New Year's Eve Eve, which will be December the 30th. There will be the fifth channel panel and myself, Rob Gauthier, Daryl Anka, Nora Harold, Wendy Kennedy, Daniel Scranton, uh, Sean Swanson, Lee Harris, Kalina Angel, and possibly some people that I can't remember will be there, but it's going to be a full day of channeling. So please go to thechannelpanel.com and buy your ticket. So. That's it, I think, for this week. And the next week we have Jonathan C. Mark and Martin will be here, I believe. Excellent. That'll be great. Yes. So for everyone. Right. Have a love. wonderful day, everyone. God bless you, and thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Much love. Namaste. You love you, so Thank you. Namaste. Bye -bye. Thank love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hit the button. Alex, we're done. <laughs> uh.